Hey, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're exploring the top 21 best things to do in Portugal. So think of this video as the ultimate travel guide for 2024. Hey everyone, we're coming to you from Portugal. It's our third time here and there are so many things to see. So we thought the best way to break it all down is to highlight different experiences. From the historical landmarks to cultural experiences and the great outdoors. And don't worry, we won't forget the food. The best part of visiting Portugal is enjoying its food and wine. So let's get started. Our first stop takes you to Sintra, one of the most beautiful towns in Portugal with many things to see and do. And two of our top picks are located right here. Located just 30 minutes from Lisbon, this is a popular day trip, but we suggest spending at least two days. And the first place you should go is Peña Palace. This is the most popular attraction in all of Lisbon. It's a beautiful fairy tale castle that is one of Portugal's seven wonders. It was commissioned in the 19th century by King Ferdinand, and it's a mixture of Moorish, Gothic, and Maulan designs. And you can really see that because it is so eclectic with different vibrant colors of yellow, blue, orange, and red, and all these different designs that make it just feel like a fairy tale. When you do go, make sure you book a timed entry and make that entry very first thing in the morning to beat the crowd so you have it all to yourself. Then after you've seen it, spend the day exploring the grounds and see all of the different vantage points of the castle. It's amazing. Another one of our favorite places in all of Portugal was to visit Quinta de Regalira. The estate itself is beautiful, but the real attraction is the initiation well. And this well was actually used by the Freemasons as a test of will to enter their secret society. This is also the reason why we say to spend two days in Sintra, because you'll want to get to the initiation well first thing in the morning, because that's when the crowds are at its least. And to see it without anybody there is just amazing. That's what we got to do because we were first there. So we do recommend uh, getting there first thing in the morning. And as you walk down, it's pretty amazing to just to take in how it would have felt back then to walk down that circular cavern all the way to the bottom. And don't forget, when you get to the bottom, you continue to walk through caves. There's a small little waterfall and you come out and after that you can explore the rest of the grounds. Next on the list is Belém Tower, another one of the seven wonders of Portugal. Making our way to Lisbon, the capital city of Portugal, you can spend three days here and barely scratch the surface of all the things to do. But when you do visit, don't miss Belém Tower. Located on the Tagus River, this beautiful 16th century fort is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that was built to guard the entrance of Lisbon along the river. Now you could admire it from the outside and if you get a chance, go inside to get views over the Tagus River. Also, make sure to book your timed entry in advance and go either early in the morning or later in the afternoon when the crowds are at their least. Fun fact, it actually used to be more of an island and then after the earthquake, it moved closer to land. So that makes it a little bit more accessible by that little bridge. Next on our list is Geronimo's Monastery, another of the seven wonders of Portugal. And it's just a short walk from Balam Tower. This UNESCO World Heritage Site was built in the 16th century and took more than 100 years to build. It was built in honor of Saint Jerome, who is the patron saint of scholars and navigators. Portugal was a huge country for navigation, and this also pays homage to Vasco da Gama, who was one of the great explorers of Portugal. He was the first European to reach India by the sea, and this was to celebrate his return from India. When you go inside, you can see his tomb and other prominent figures of Portugal. It's absolutely stunning, and if you like history, don't miss going to Geronimo's Monastery. <music> 
Porto is the second largest city in Portugal and one of the top places to visit when searching for the best things to do in Portugal. And one of the first things you notice is the Dom Luis I bridge. This bridge is a huge double-decker metal arch bridge that dominates the Porto waterfront. This massive bridge spans over the Douro River connecting Porto with Gaia. At 172 meters in length, it is one of the longest iron arch bridges in the world. It was designed by a student of Gustav Eiffel, and you can really see the inspiration and similarities from the Eiffel Tower. You can walk along both the top and the bottom of the bridge, and there are several vantage points to see it from the city, both from above and below, and at night it is lit up for all to see. Sao Bento Railway Station is often considered one of the most beautiful railway stations in the world. Located in the heart of the UNESCO World Heritage City, it is one of the most popular places to visit in Porto. Tours go inside regularly to view the 22,000 tiles covering its walls. Known as Azuejo, these tiles can be seen throughout Portugal. They're not only used for decoration, but for insulation to keep buildings cool in the summer and holding the heat in the winter. The tiles themselves in Sao Bento Station represent important events throughout Portuguese history. The reason we have Guimarães Castle on our list is that you must visit the birthplace of Portugal. Yes, you heard me right, it's where Portugal was born. It's extremely well preserved. It was built in the 10th century to defend against Moors and Norsemen. It was also the birthplace of the first king of Portugal. Now you can wander the halls and take in all the history of this UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's something you don't want to miss here in Portugal. Aveiro is often touted as the Venice of Portugal, and for good reason. It has these incredible gondolas that are all painted and colorful and are called moleros. Now tourists can go and take a ride on the canals here and learn about the history of Aveiro. Aveiro is located just about 40 minutes outside of Porto, and this was a famous fishing town and popular for tiles and for salt. They still do salt production in Aveiro and the boats were used actually to transport the salt production. While you are visiting Aveiro, you want to go and visit Costa Nova as well. These are those famous houses that are painted in colorful stripes in Portugal. Portugal was made on fishing. It is a country that was built on the sea and many men went out to fish and were often lost at sea. So the women, they painted the houses colorful to try and keep the spirit uplifted and that's how it was born. They used to be colored in just black and red because they are one, waterproof and two, the cheapest. Today they're colored in blues and greens and yellows and it's just absolutely beautiful. When you go to the fishing villages all around Portugal, you will see these famous houses. And when you are in Aveiro, you want to eat ovos moles, which is their answer to pastel de nata. They're famous pastries that are stuffed with egg yolks and sugar, and they come in shapes of the sea, hence the fishing village theme. When you come to Portugal, one of the things you must do is go to see a fado show. It is the national music of Portugal, and it is so important that it is a UNESCO-designated art form. Now, they study it in Coimbra, where the university is, and then let all of the boys, they serenade the women. And when the women, if they like the boys, they want them to sing some more, they just turn the lights on three times and they will all keep playing. If they do a good job, they get a chocolate. If they do a really good job, they get some wine. Now, Fado you can see in Lisbon and Porto and Coimbra, but it is actually nationwide. And it was done in the 18th century. It was all of the coastal cities, they sang it because they were longing for the men that were out to sea in the fishing communities, because fishing was a very dangerous job. So this is a melancholy song that the people sang because they were longing for home. And that is what Fado was all about, it became so popular in the 1930s, 
And the best thing to do is go and see it in a wine cellar in Porto or go to the Alfama district in Lisbon. Ponta da Piedade is the best place on Portugal's mainland to watch the sunset. Set on a remote headland just outside of Lagos in the Algarve, there are walking paths high on the cliffs overlooking the sea. There are stairs that head down to deep coves lined with fishing boats. You can explore this by boat or by foot, and we highly recommend hiking. There are beautiful boardwalks taking you out to extraordinary viewpoints. You can drive and park in the free parking lot or take a taxi or Uber. If you're up for a big hike, there's a walking trail from Praia Dona Ana Beach in Lagos. When you reach the headlands, you will have this amazing view of the sunset, sea arches and beautiful sea pillars. Located in Lagos, Praia dos Estudantes just might be the most photographed beach in Portugal. This is that famous, famous beach that has that stone bridge on top of a high cliff that connects a large rock formation to the mainland. You've all seen it. To get there, you walk through several beaches that have tunnels that connect them all. There's sea arches, and all of these are man-made. And that's because these beaches were part of the Fort of Lagos. Now this fort is no longer used, but the bridges and tunnels remain, making for a really unique experience and easy access for the public to navigate along all of the different beaches that are on the coast. You can sunbathe on the sandy beaches as you admire the high sea cliffs. It's truly one of the most unique attractions in Portugal. Praia da Marina is a small beach but it is the sea cliffs surrounding it that have made it so impressive. They reach up to 50 meters or 150 feet in height. And there are arches, natural wells, and rock formations surrounding the beach. And you can see it from above while hiking the Seven Valleys hike. Or you can walk down to the beach to enjoy the soft sand and shade from its formations. It's the perfect spot for snorkeling in Portugal as the water is really calm. You don't want to miss it. Portugal is famous for its port wines, and when you come to Porto or the Douro Valley, or really anywhere, you have to try it. Port wine is a fortified sweet wine that is synonymous for the wines of this area. If you come to the Gaia region in Porto, all of the wine cellars are along the river here, along the river. The wine is produced in the Douro Valley, but all of the cellars are here where it is blended and aged. And then you can go into all of the port wine cellars and do some tasting, buy their wines. It's really an incredible experience. If you get to the Douro Valley, you can actually go to where they are produced as well. Another unique spirit here in Portugal is Vino Verde. It's a green wine. Now, a lot of people think that the wine is green, but it's actually a young wine. You know, when you call somebody green, when they don't, they, they haven't matured yet, that's exactly what the wine is. Vino Verde is a, a wine that they purposely do not age for long. It's usually a white wine or a rosé, but they do have red wines in Vino Verde as well. And usually they are sparkling. When you go up to the north of, of Portugal, that's where you can tour all of the Vino Verde vineyards. And a lot of them have a bed and breakfast and you can stay over and walk through the vineyards and everybody is so hospitable. The great thing about Vino Verde is it's only about 9% alcohol. So you can drink it with your dinner without feeling too guilty about drinking too much. The Portuguese are passionate about their food, and for a small country, it has a lot of Michelin-rated restaurants, with nearly 40 awarded that coveted star. We ate at A Cozina in Guimarães, and we were amazed at how large the portions were for a Michelin star restaurant. We usually leave hungry, but this was one of the most satisfying and delicious meals we've ever had. Trust us, you'll want to splurge once on a Michelin experience, and Portugal is the way to do it. One thing's for sure, we ate a lot of cod in Portugal. Actually, there are a thousand and one ways, apparently, to cook cod. 
they fry it, they bake it. But in the case of bacalao, they actually make it into cod cakes. So there's uh, stores all around, especially in Porto. We got to sample it quite a bit that are actually these very beautiful stores where they sell cod cakes and you can have some wine or port with it. Bacalao can also be done just not in a cake, but actually just the fish itself, nicely baked, really fantastic. So, you know, that's at least two ways to eat cod here in Portugal. Portugal's most famous treat is pastel de nata. And if you're in Lisbon, you have to check out Pastel de Belém, which is the place that houses the original Pastel de Nata. It was actually made from a recipe uh, that was passed on to the nuns and monks from the monastery of Belém. And the nuns there, interestingly enough, used to use the egg whites to iron their habits and keep them very starched and stiff but they didn't know what to do with the yolks afterwards. So what they decided to do is combine them with sugar and put them in a pastry to make pastel de nata. Now you can get them all over the country here in Portugal. Actually, every place claims to have the best pastel de nata. So wherever you are in Portugal, make sure to give it a try and be your own judge. You have to cruise the Douro River. We took a couple of Douro River cruises in Portugal and you must get on the water if you are in the region. The Douro River is one of the oldest trading routes in the entire world with settlements dating back to the 8th century BC. Boating under the six bridges of Porto to see the Ribeira and the Gaia from the river is breathtaking and it's an easy afternoon excursion. But you can book longer trips from a few days to a week. We took the Avalon Alegria from Porto into the Douro Valley, and this was an amazing adventure. It's a unique way to, way to see the communities from a different view, and we went through locks and bridges, including the highest lock in all of Europe. It was the coolest experience. That was just incredible. Some of the communities are also located along the Camino de Compostela. That, that, famous pilgrimage where people go to churches and get the stamps on their passport. So you can hike for weeks at a time and do this pilgrimage that people have been doing for centuries. The Douro Valley is famous for its vineyards and wine producing, but it's the beauty that makes it really stand out from other wine regions. The vineyards are located along steep hills lining the river, and one of the best ways to see it is to go for a walk through one of its many vineyards. A visit to a winery will take you back in time as you walk through ancient vines and wineries that have been passed down from family to family for generations. You'll notice a bit of a theme in our recommendations because we love going on the water and a speedboat through the Algarve is nothing short of a great adventure on the water. The coast of the Algarve is one of the most striking coastlines on earth and to truly appreciate its beauty, you have to see these sea cliffs from a boat. We took a two hour speedboat tour from Port Mau, which is located between the two major towns of the Algarve, which are Lagos and Cavallero. You leave from this freshwater river that takes you through cities, and then you go along the rugged coast of the Atlantic Ocean. It has endless high rock formation, towers, sea caves for as far as the eye can see. I have never seen so many rock locations in one place, and you can do it all in an afternoon. When we've gone to ruins around the world, they're always overrun with crowds. But in northern Portugal, you'll find the Cetania de Bitoros, an ancient fort hill that dates back to the second century BC. A walk through the ruins offers a fascinating glimpse into the lives of the Celtic tribes that once lived and thrived here 2,000 years ago. And we had it all to ourselves. Just one of the many reasons to explore all these places in Portugal. What an incredible journey it's been, exploring the stunning landscapes, vibrant cultures, and rich history of Portugal. Absolutely, from the lively streets of Lisbon to the serene beauty of the Algarve's beaches, and not to forget the enchanting Douro Valley, we've seen a side of Portugal that's both diverse and breathtaking. 
and the food. Oh, the flavors of Portugal have been a journey in themselves. From fresh seafood in Porto to the traditional pastel de nata, it's been a feast for the senses. We've also met some amazing people along the way. Their warmth and hospitality have made this trip even more memorable. It's these experiences and connections that truly highlight the beauty of traveling. Now, it's your turn. We'd love to hear about your adventures in Portugal. What are your top picks? Do you have any hidden gems or personal favorites? Yes, please share your stories, tips, or questions in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, make sure to like and subscribe for more adventures. Also, check out our blog post right here and for more information about traveling in Portugal. We cover where to stay, tips on how to save money, all those things that will make your next trip to Portugal the best. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Ciao for now.